And what we're trying to do here is just get them lats opened up in the back. You want to keep them shoulders nice and loose and relaxed, keeping that same rhythm in the feet. And you exhale as you come out, inhale on the way down. Warming up correctly is super important, not just to prevent you from getting injured, but to help you perform at your best. Whether you're just working out or you're fighting or sparring, doesn't matter what it is. If you get a full body warm up, you will get the most out of your sessions. And on this video, we're going to break it all down for you. And if you see across the bottom here, we've made this super easy for you to follow along with. No matter what body part you want to learn about, how to warm that body part up correctly, it's there. Just go to that section. And also, I recommend you email yourself this video so the next time you're going in the gym to warm up, you've got it there to access very simply and then you can get the best warm up possible. And guys, if you're new to this channel, my name's Tony Jeffries. I'm an Olympic medalist boxer, former undefeated professional, seven times national champion, European gold medalist. And on this YouTube channel, I give you everything boxing education. So if you want to learn how to get better at boxing, make sure you subscribe for more videos like this. And today, I brought along my business partner, my friend, Glenn Holmes, who is an expert in boxing fitness. He is the man. So he's going to take us through these warm ups and give us some of his expertise to help you get better and get a better understanding of how to warm up your full body. So how long would you recommend a warm up, whether it's for just a run, a boxing session, a fight, a hit class, mm -hmm. is the, are they all the same or what? I think it depends on the intensity of the session. So if you're going to go and do a, a, a track workout where you're sprinting, you probably need a way longer warm up, like a good 15 to 20 minutes. If you're going to go into a fight or a, a hard sparring session, again, a good 15 to 20 minutes. If you're just going to go and do a, a ticking over training session at a lighter intensity, maybe five minutes is probably yeah. fine. So with me, with the, with the fights and the sparring, um, I wouldn't have the intensity so high because I was always in my head, like, I don't want to get tired from my sport, you know, in the warm-up. Yeah. Warm mm -hmm. So I would kind of get me, get me heart rate raised yeah uh, get a little sweat on yep. a little bit of shadow boxing and, and then get into it for yeah the fight. totally yeah so you never want to go too intense on these things you shouldn't be coming out of your warm-up like really out of breath. exhausted feel, yeah yeah you should just feel like you're starting to wake up so glenn like i mentioned there you know warming up the full body is very important and yeah. you know you want to elaborate a little bit more on that why we should do this every session yeah, so whatever you're doing, whether you're sparring, you're fighting, you're just going into a training session, it's really important to just make sure the whole body is kind of ready and prepped and primed to perform. And as we know, boxing is really explosive, it's high intensity, it requires a lot of athleticism, balance, power, speed, you know, so um, going through a warm up like this and making sure everything's ready to go, you're going to be at your best when you're in that session. Definitely. And, you know, trying to get into a session when you're cold. I've done it before. I've done videos before where I hang the bag and then I'm punching. Yeah. And then the next day I'm in bits because yeah. I never warmed up correctly. Right. But as well, when you don't warm up correctly, you can't punch as hard, as fast. You're not as loose. Yeah, you will get injured. Never recommend doing static stretching where you're actually holding a stretch before an explosive workout. Because what you're doing is you're actually stretching that muscle out before it's had a chance to warm up. So it's compromised from the beginning. You go and try and be explosive with that, boom, it can, it can pull, it can tear a lot quicker than if you, if you think of it as like an elastic band. If you're gradually just kind of stretching it out like this, then when it's time for it to be explosive, boom, it can, it can contract and expand quick because it's warmed That's up, it's loose. Injured. Yeah, but if you just stretch it straight away like this, and then try and pull it fast, it's like likely to snap, yeah. right? So that's kind of how I think about it. Warm up. Let's talk a little bit about warm up. What actually is a warm up? What you're doing? What you're what's going for your body when you're warming up? Right. So the main things we want to focus on. The first thing we want to focus on is is the raise phase, right? So we're going to go through four phases throughout the warm up. Raise is number one, and what we're trying to do there is just gradually increase the blood flow and get blood flow to the muscles and the joints. And blood flow, oxygen is in the blood, so right, we're getting oxygen to the muscles, we're getting oxygen to the joints and tendons and everything that we need to make sure it can perform properly. So that's the first phase, just getting that blood flow in, just gradually get, get, getting the heart rate up. Uh, the second phase is the activation phase. So what we're trying to do here is get your brain into the muscles specifically that you're going to use, right? So if you think of a punch, what are we using? Well, we're using the full body, we're using the core, we're using our back, we're using our shoulders, we're using our arms. So during the activation phase, we're, the, we're, we're getting the brain to connect to those muscles so then when you're in that session it's already firing and you can you know recruit the muscles that you need on demand like quickly and then the third phase is the mobilization phase so during that phase we're just trying to increase the range of motion so like if you get out of bed first thing in the morning and you try and like turn your arm like this it's going to be pretty tight right from sleep so like during during a warm-up 
you're just trying to increase that how far you can use that that shoulder the hips whatever it might be you're just trying to increase that range of motion so then when you're in the ring or you're hitting the bag whatever you're doing you've got that full range of motion nothing short like you mentioned when you hit the bag without warming up it's kind of shorter yeah. and tighter yeah, right stiff, so you've yeah. not got that loose range of motion so the third phase the mobilization phase just increasing your ability your body's ability to move further and have a longer range of motion then the last one um, is just the potentiation phase so that's kind of a little bit more technical. What we're doing there is trying to get your body to produce force, maximum force and power, right? So we, we, we're punching the bag, we're punching an opponent, whatever it might be, we want to be fast. During that last phase, we're just getting those fast twitch muscles fired up and making sure we're ready to be explosive and deliver maximum force, speed, power, all the things that we want in a punch. And there is, <clears throat> as you know, see there, there's a lot more to warming up than doing a few runs with a few shoulder swings like that you know and we see that all the time and now depending on your goal your warm-ups will be a little bit different for example if i'm a 55 year old guy who is overweight i would warm up a little bit different to a 19 year old fighter who's training for the world championships right Totally, yeah, but you can still take the same principles, the same movements, even if you're new to fitness, new to working out, new to boxing. Just apply, this is, we're gonna go through a warm up that like a professional fighter would probably go through before a training session or even before a fight. But there's no reason why somebody who's new to this or overweight or doesn't have the physical uh, attributes to do every single movement perfect it's still something you can work up to yeah. and improve and practice just like anything else and like you said you can build up to this you don't have to try and do everything on here do what is good for you what feels good for you but there might be moves in, and things here down below which which is you know too advanced doesn't matter it's something that you can build up to and you can always work towards as well so we're going to start off our warm-up with the rears glenn what is the rears so we're just gradually trying to increase the blood flow, get the body moving, a little bit dynamic, so just gonna be on the toes a little bit, simple basic movements, nothing too complicated or strenuous, just get the heart rate up a little bit and just start getting the blood yeah, flow through okay. the body, just increase so. the body temperature. So a good one to start off with, just on the toes, a little bounce to the feet, and you can just start with some nice relaxed arm swings forward, just kind of gradually loosen the shoulders. Doesn't have to be super big, we don't wanna be going too big yet. And then from there, we're just gonna reverse it backwards, so the opposite direction. That's it. And then when you're doing this, you want to keep them shoulders nice and loose and relaxed, keeping that same rhythm in the feet. And then from there, we can open up the chest. So just across, over, under. Oh, I love these ones. Yeah, and just feel like shoulder blades squeeze. Let the arms swing and relax. Just let everything go. So right now, I'm um, getting my, it's raising my heart rate. That's the, yeah, that's called the raise, raising the heart rate. Exactly. Getting so used just to increasing the body temperature. Because you don't well. want to start getting into like dynamic stretching and stuff when you, you've got to rest in the heart rate, right? Exactly, right. And then from there, we can just go into jumping jacks, just arms all the way over the top red. So here, we're just opening up the shoulders a little bit too. That's it. And just keeping that same rhythm in the feet, keeping the breathing under control, shoulders are nice and relaxed. And then from there, we can just go into some heel flicks. That what this is gonna do is up, uh, start getting those hamstrings firing a little bit. And you're just getting that dynamic movement through the feet as well. If you think about when we're boxing, we're on the toes all the time. So it's just introducing the brain to that kind of feel. And then from there, we can set the feet. We can just do some punch across, nice and light. And what we're trying to do here is just get them lats opened up in the back and getting some rotational movement through the core as well. A common thing is with boxers is people will come in the gym and they'll get a jump rope straight away when they're cold and start jumping. Yep. Uh, very, very common. What do you think about that? I think it's a lot of impact in the, in the, in the ankles and the feet like straight away, which for some people can be a bit too much, especially if you've got beat up legs from yeah. like road work, running, all that kind of stuff. And down. Just going straight onto it, yeah. it can be a bit too much for some people, but it's not it's not too bad if you're starting off pretty light. Yeah. Um, next one from there, we can just kind of hinge back into the hips a little bit. So you're loading up the hips and the hamstrings, and then we're just gonna swing the arms across. So a full body right here, just relax your arms. Just let them go, yeah. So we're getting blood flow right through to the hands here. We're getting rotational movement through the back, so that lumbar spine, we're just rotating that a little bit too. So that's gonna prep the body for the punches. We're loosening up the back of the legs as well. And then from there, from the same position, if you think of three points of contact, just forward, middle, and back. And then we're just really getting a little pull through the uh, back of the legs right here. So we're loosening up the lower back. We're opening up the hamstrings in the, in the back of the legs, just increasing that range of motion that I talked about in the beginning through the back of the legs. All right, and then just slowly up from there. 
Good. Yeah, so now I've got the heart raised. Now yeah, we're ready to get it. Feel a little bit. Feel yeah, I'm feeling it. Feel feeling feel 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 yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, I'm feeling it. So heart rate should just be slowly increasing here and blood flow starting to go through the through the body and the areas that we want it. All right, so the, the next phase, we're going to go into the lower body, right? So the next three, four movements we're going to do right here, we're just going to focus on getting the legs awake. Now, if you're uh, boxing, moving around the heavy bag, sparring, we all know it's very lower body. You need good leg endurance, right? So in order to make sure that your legs Feel, feel strong and athletic and unbalanced throughout that session. Uh, these movements right here are just gonna get your legs awake and get them prepped for whatever you're gonna be doing. So the first one we're gonna do is kind of a dynamic stretch and we're also gonna get some upper body involved. So we're gonna go into a quad pull. It's also good for your balance and getting that core fired up, single leg stability. So we're gonna pull the foot high behind us and reach through, right? And you get a little stretch to the quad and the hip flexor there and then a couple of steps to reset. Now with stretches and pulls like this, dynamic stretches and dynamic pulls, you don't want to hold it too long. Just one second, a couple of steps, one second, and just trying to gradually increase that range of motion. We'll probably do like five, three to five reps each side. So we're just going to uh, we'll start with the right, right side and you're going to reach with the opposite arm, right? And you're trying to reach as far as you can, right? You're going to stretch through the lats, a couple of steps on your toes in between to keep it dynamic. So yep. now I noticed you told me to have my palm facing rather than this way. Is there yep. a reason for that? Yep, because you, then you've got the correct positioning in the shoulder right here. If your palm is in, you've got that internal rotation, so it allows more movement through your lats and your scaps right here. So that's a key point right there. Yeah, and lats and scaps in the back are key for key, mobility back here is a key issue with boxers. They're very tight back here. They like tend this. to be very shoulder dominant. Yeah and rounded. So keeping that mobility and range of motion through here with reaches like that and allowing those scaps to slide is, is key for uh, keep, keeping the injuries off yeah. and making sure you're still explosive too. Uh, next one, we're just gonna go into some leg swings. So you can kind of get a little bit of shoulder into it. And what I like to do with these is kind of like an arm swing. And again, it's just opposite hand, opposite foot and alternating and kind of circle it around. Just trying to kick your hand basically. Now, if you range of motion in your hamstrings, which for a lot of people is not great, you can start off nice and short and gradually build up through like 10, 15, maybe even 20 reps on these and then try and increase that range of motion. So that was gonna be my next question. How long should you do each exercise for? How many reps or do you just do it for, like uh, what I would do is like 10, 15 seconds. If it's e yep. either side, then move on, whatever feels good. Yeah, maybe like 15, 20 seconds, maybe 30 seconds each one. Um, I like to make sure, if you're going by reps, make sure you're evening out each side. So five right, five left. Um, to be like eight to 10 reps is good on each of these. Right. Yeah. So a couple more uh, for, for lower body to target the groin area and the hips. Uh, we're gonna stabilize and again, single leg, and we're gonna try and think about keep getting the groin at a right angle and pulling that knee nice and high. And you should just feel a little stretch through the hips. And then it's good for your balance too. Yeah, balance is. is a key component for boxing. So we're just kind of getting that brain fired up into one leg and opening up the hip and groin area a little bit. And again, just five to 10 reps on each side is good. And just trying to get that nice and high, you kind of feel the outside of the hips, inside of the groin. That area tends to get really tight with athletes as well. So it's good to open that up. And then the last one we're gonna do is just some lateral movement. Again, if you think about boxing, if you're trying to circle the ring, lateral movement all the time, it's requiring the outside of the glutes and the outside of the feet to work. So what I like to do for those is just a lateral lunge. So you're gonna kind of start with your feet narrow, step out nice and wide and kind of sit back into the hip. If I turn this way, you see the angle. We're not going into the knee like this, we're sitting back into the hip, getting that glute to fire. And from there, we're gonna drive out and drive that knee up. And again, you can do like five, to 10 reps on each side. And what that's doing with that knee drive at the top, again, is getting you to balance and stabilize and tighten up that core, whilst also getting a little bit of range of motion through that hip flexor as well. So all of this stuff is, is dynamic because it's not just focusing on one specific area. We're doing multiple things at once, getting balance fired up, getting glutes, hips, core, everything's which, uh, working together. Which ultimately is firing this up, your brain, Big time, which is yeah. the most important thing in all of this. So yeah, with the balance and all of these different warm-up exercises, that's really making you think and it's challenging, challenging you a little bit as well. Yeah, it's warming up the brain. Yep, and just generally building your athleticism. If you can control your body like this stuff with ease, uh, your boxing is going to only get better. All right, so in this next section, we're going to focus on uh, the upper body. So we're actually going to be on the floor to start getting the uh, upper body awake. So you can just drop to your knees, right? So uh, all fours basically. And then what we're gonna try and do, this is called thread needle or thread the needle. So what he's gonna try and do is get his arm under and through his body. And we're gonna keep that palm up and he's trying to get as far through as he can and then just straight back through to the other side. And with these, you can go pretty quick. So he's just moving 
through. So you're kind of holding it for a half second and then right back through to the other side. And what we're doing here is getting all that rotation through the upper body, uh, upper back, lower back, increasing the range of motion through the lats as well. And just getting that rotation through the spine, which is key. Because this is go yeah, sorry, this is actually a, a warm up exercise that I never did as a fighter, but I think it's one of the most important things as a fighter. It's when when you try this, getting your shoulder all the way at the floor, you'll feel just how good it, it is, and you'll see the benefits of it mm -hmm. straight away. I wish I knew this when I was fighting, and I would have won an Olympic gold medal rather than <laughs> yeah. the bronze. Totally. <laughs> and yeah, your goal with these is to get your hand as far through as you can at the bottom of that shoulder on the ground, right? So, like I mentioned previously, range of motion through that area in the back right here is a, is a key component for boxes, and that's a really good one. And if you think when we're punching, what's the upper body doing? It's rotating, right? It's rotating. So it's just creating that same movement pattern and, and getting everything opened up back there. Uh, the next one we're going to do from the same position, you're going to have one hand on the ground, one hand on the back of your head. So we'll start left side, left hand on the back of the head. What we're trying to do here is get this uh, top elbow down to the other elbow. So we're coming all the way down and then he's gonna rotate up and try and get that as high as he can and really open up the front of the shoulder and the armpit area whilst again, getting that rotation through the back too. And you just exhale as you come out, inhale on the way down. And again, five to 10 reps each side is good. And you can probably go a little quicker on these two because by this stage the heart rate is up, we're in it a little bit more, so things can start to pick up in speed a little bit as well. Yeah, perfect. And you don't want to hold this, you just want to keep that body moving as well. Yep, and just trying to get as high as you can. So two really good ones there for thoracic rotation and opening up the shoulders in the front and that whole armpit area. All right, so we're back on the feet, continuing the upper body warm up. So with this one for tricep kickbacks, what we're gonna try and do is touch the back of the neck or the spine area with the fingertips and kind of drive it back with some speed. And what we're doing here is getting a stretch through those triceps and back of the arms, which is engaged in every single point. So we're just trying to get that tricep muscle to kind of start firing. And Would you twist your feet on this? Yeah, yeah, you can make it full body, pivot the feet, turn into it a little bit as well. So yeah, the more, the more you can incorporate your full body into these uh, specific movement patterns, the better it's gonna be, rather than just kind of standing here doing this. Yeah. You know, like make everything down, turn the feet, turn the hips, exactly. And again, five to 10 reps each on, on each side right there. Next one, we're gonna go back to that hinge position right here. Hips back, hamstrings loaded. Grip the floor with the feet as well. It's gonna get those glutes fired up. We're just gonna punch across and really drive down. You should feel a slight stretch through the back, fully extend the arms, nice and sharp with this. Just kind of get introducing that punching pattern um, in a hinge position. Just that rotational movement. Yeah. Um, the more rotational movements you have in these warm-ups, the, the better it's going to be. Um, and then the last one, um, boxes tend to have a lot of inflammation and tightness in the elbow area from you know from punching and, and overuse in, in this area. So with this one, we're just going to go back on the toes, get that down and then it's like to just shake it out and kind of circle, create like a big circle at the elbow. And you want to do a lot of reps with these, like 10, 15, 20 reps each side, and just nice, quick, relax everything, let that blood flow get right through to the fingers. Both ways as well, right yeah. forwards and back. So circles in, circles out, and just creating that, getting that tension out of that elbow area too. Again, it's making you think. Yep. And then another one, what you could do, I've just thought of there, one forward, one back. <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> um, that elbow area as well, it's the bottom of the tricep, which we just opened up right here. So that then, where the tricep finishes in that elbow, it's just again, it's an extension of that whole area right there. So uh, yeah, just good. Now the tricep should be awake and the elbow yeah. should be, hands and elbow should be free. Feeling great. So moving on to the full body section. This is the world's greatest stretch. It's commonly referred to as the world's greatest stretch for a reason because it feels amazing and it, it opens up the entire body and it's great for anything that you do in boxing, running, whatever it might be. This is the number one stretch right here. It's definitely my favorite out of everything. Yeah. So we're gonna start in a push up position in a high plank. So hands right under the shoulders. Feet can be a little bit wider just to get that stability first. Now the first step here, we're gonna start left side. He's gonna step his left foot right up by the left hand right here. You can drop the back knee on the ground from there. Yep, and then the left arm's gonna come out and then just rotate all the way back as far as you can, keeping the arms straight. And you see that position right there, the hips opened up, the shoulders are uh, opened up, the rib cage is opened up, and the key right here is just to breathe, right? So as he goes back, so switch, now we'll go right side, step right in. The goal is to get the foot right by the hand. As he rotates, you're gonna exhale, right? And get that out, that, uh, that out breath right there, yeah. And then keep it going. And we can go a little quicker on these too. 
That's it. And you want to look at your hand as well, right? Yeah, follow the hand and get that neck rotation in there too. What I like to do, you can put the back knee on the ground too if you want. What if, if you put the back knee on the ground, it's going to switch that back hip flexor off. If you want a deeper stretch to that back hip flexor, you can keep it off the ground like Tony was doing. Um, and what I like to do with these as well is put a little calf stretch in. So we're getting those calves fired up, we're on our toes the whole time in boxing. So what you can do is you can just kind of step into it, drop your back knee and rotate. And then when you switch, just kind of pedal out the calves a little bit and then come back in. Just makes it a little bit more, uh, even more full body than, than what it is. But yeah, yeah. there's your world great stretch. Feels amazing, right? Yeah. And then we can advance that a little bit more. And we can talk about this by make the world's greatest stretch even better by dropping this elbow, yeah. right? Yeah. And now when I drop this elbow, I'm gonna show you from this side. Yeah. Drop this elbow. Now I'm stretching even more than my full body yeah. from there. As soon as he drops the elbow, that IT band it's called, which attaches the hip and the knee right down the side of the leg is getting uh, opened up as well. Yeah, so dropping that, you know, just this here is a great stretch. Yeah, yeah. And then we're twisting and putting everything into it. Yeah, yeah. And then the little, yeah, the, we've, just, we've just made the world's greatest stretch even, even better. better. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> yeah. All right, so continuing uh, on with the full body section, the next two we're going to start getting into a, a little bit more um, advanced. This is um, going to be a reverse lunge with some upper body rotation. So we're firing up glutes, quads, lower body core, we're getting rotation in there. So what we're doing here is we're stepping back. He's going to try and keep both knees at a right angle as he drops, sitting into the hips. Drop, 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 right, core tight. And then I'm just gonna ask him to rotate and kind of follow your hands with your eyes too. Imagine you're trying to put your hands in, into where your lower back is. Yeah, I love this. Yeah, so what he's doing is getting that pushing movement through the, the lunge, so the whole foot's on the ground. We're getting those glutes activated, which are your power muscles. The glutes is the biggest muscle in the body, and that's gonna generate a force for your punches. So getting glutes and lower body fired up is key. Keeping that core tight, now we're getting abs involved. So he's really notice how he's rotating over the front leg. So he's stepping back with the left, um, rotating to the right. Stepping back with the right, rotating to the left. So there's a good one there to continue that, that rotation through the spine, getting the core fired up, whilst also loading up the legs, glutes, uh, quads, thighs, uh, all at the same time too. And again, it's just good for balance because it's, it's, it's unilateral, it's on one leg. So it's just getting that brain to start working on the balance a little bit. All right, so, so the next one in the full body section is kind of four movements rolled into one floor. And what I like about this is we talked in the beginning about getting the nervous system fired up, getting your brain connected to your body. This is amazing for that because you gotta really focus on your balance and your movement patterns. And what we're trying to do here is just develop uh, your hinge, your push, your range of motion through your shoulders and your back. So again, just full body. So what we're gonna start with is a hinge pattern and it's on one leg, right? So we're gonna stabilize on the left side we're going to hinge, which means we're going to push the hip back and we're going to lift that back leg out. So we stabilize on one leg and we're going to reach as far choose. as we can. <laughs> reach as far as we can with both arms, right? Now core is fired up. He's working on balance and stability in the lower body. From there, I'm going to ask him to hinge back, extend the hips, drive the knee up. He's going to pull and hug that knee in towards his chest. Now with that right leg, lunge forward, sit into the lunge and then reach overhead and keeping that rib cage down as you reach over it. So getting those shoulders opened up, increasing the range of motion through the shoulders and the arms, whilst working on uh, lower body stability too. So hinge back, reach. Now he's gonna knee pull on the left as he extends the right hip through. Knee pull, nice and high. Getting that little glute stretch right there. Lunge through, getting into that glute again, and opening up the shoulders, right? Now maybe five reps on each side. And you can feel straight away, look how much he's trying to concentrate right here on the balance and the movement pattern. Getting those scaps to rotate through. Glutes, core, glutes and quads, shoulders, reaching. And again, just make sure you're breathing through this as well as you're hinging and going through it, make sure your breathing pattern's on point. Yeah, I just want to say this is the first time I've ever done this and it's really good. But you see now I was losing my balance and I kept trying and kept trying. Like anything, the more you practice, the better you're going to get it. So don't get disheartened if, you, if you're like this. Yeah. Hold, hold the wall, it's fine, hold yeah. the wall. Get used to it exactly. uh, and then- And then try and build up. Yeah, and then yeah. build up and slowly yeah. improve. That's what we want from this, from my YouTube channel. I want you to improve. Yeah. And this is how you improve, slowly. Cause you can't do it like Glenn, you know, don't worry about it. So, so a couple of things on, on this specific floor as well. I noticed when you finished, 
you only did like two or three reps each side, but your heart rate was up. My heart rate's flying now. You were concentrating on your balance and getting it right and not falling over and being in the right position. So because you're concentrating more, you, your body's saying like, I need more oxygen to concentrate to pull it off. And so off. that's getting that raise effect yeah, out of it too. Right. Sometimes we think we've got to do this and move around fast to get the heart rate up, but sometimes it's the slower, more difficult movements that also get the heart rate yeah. up as well. But what this is doing, this is just great for building your, just your general athleticism. Being able to hinge, push, reach, all that stuff in one floor like this is going to make you better athletically. Now the better you are athletically, the better you're going to be at boxing. And it's as simple as that really. The better yeah. athlete you are, the better boxer you're going to be. You know, we look at the, the best world champions right now, like Canelo and the modern world champions, they're like elite supreme athletes and this stuff just comes easy for them and that's kind of my attitude towards like warm-ups and training for boxing is like let's develop athleticism then your boxing's going to be even better yeah traditionally it's been old school right right yeah boxers have been good athletes great athletes but now they're like next level next athletes. level and you look at someone like the ukrainians lomachenko or you you sick they they've got balls and the juggling yeah. while they're on the feet and doing all sorts of crazy yeah. stuff because that's what this is this is kind of doing not that in depth but this is kind of working the brain and getting your brain switched on which again is super important getting your brain connected to your body so you can do anything you want right so the next section we're going to focus on the core and the shoulders right probably the, the two most important areas for for boxing right shoulder endurance uh, key to be able to keep punching and, and firing those power shots and, and, and explosive punches and then obviously your core uh, is involved. If the core is not involved or engaged, we're not gonna generate power from the punches. I'm sure you've seen all these videos talking about engaging that core for maximum power. And then of course, if you go into a sparring session, having that fired up and awake and being able to tense it for being able to take body shots and impact and all that stuff, again, key. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the floor, three plank variations right here. And what I like, why I like planks in a warm up is it also, it's, it's getting the wrists fired up, get creating that tension in the hands and wrists and getting all those small ligaments, joints, tendons in there ready for the impact of the punches. So whenever you're in a plank, think about pushing your hands into the ground and create tension, right? So shoulders right over the hands. The first one we're gonna do is just some shoulder taps. So he's gonna touch his left shoulder with the right hand and then uh, left shoulder to the right hand. Now, if you feel yourself rocking in your hips and your lower back, just widen up your stance a little bit more, push right back into the heels, give yourself a good base in the feet. And then the goal here is to try and keep that lower back still, right? Now you can do this for like 15, 20 seconds. Uh, if you've got good core strength, you could probably get longer than that. But again, we're just warming up. So 10 to 15 seconds is good. And you want a nice quick speed on these just to kind of get those fast twitch muscles firing in the arms. And again, we're just stabilizing through that course. So that's number one. And what I like to think of when doing this is, I say this to people if I'm training them, is if you think you've got a cup of coffee on your back mm -hmm. and you know, you, you, if you're doing this, the cup of coffee's fell off. Because this is a common mistake, Glenn. Yeah. You'll agree like this. You need to keep these hips as still as possible. Like I can put the glove on your back. Try not to let it fall. Perfect. So there's a good test of your, your core stability right there. It's just you can put something on your back and try not to let it fall off. The second plank variation, again, uh, we've talked about this multiple times in this video, is getting those lats and shoulders stretched out. So from the plank position, we're just going to reach through, keeping that palm in. So it's that alternating reach, letting the biceps slide right past the head, keeping the palm in. And again, I'm going to put this glove right here. As you lift the arm off the ground, try not to let it fall off. See how your back's perfectly flat, nice and still? That's good for us to do. By the way, while we're talking about these gloves, <laughs> these are vegan cactus leather. First gloves ever in the world made from vegan cactus leather wow. uh, from Sanibel. You can click the link below, use code TONY10, I think it is TONY10, and get 10% off if you want to get yourself a pair of these bad boys here. Nice. I love them. Nice. All right. Great for uh, testing your core stability as well. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, so the third plank variation we're gonna do is just to design to get the obliques. Again, a key muscle uh, for, for your punch power and getting that uh, away before we go into a boxing session. 
Back to that plank position, this time we're going to drive the knee across to the elbow. So a couple of things you can do with this, we're going to start with the feet a little bit narrower than what we had before, and we're going to twist that lower back into it. So now we're actually looking for maximum rotation. The first two plank variations, we didn't want any rotation, we were fighting that. Now we're trying to actually twist and drive that knee across. And what I like to cue people on this is think about trying to get the knee outside of the elbow if you can. Ooh. Really twist it across, keeping They're that core tight, and exhaling every time you drive the knee across. And what, another good one right here is you can kind of hold it for a second too, just to get a little bit more activation out. So you can drive it up, hold it for a second or two, bring it back, hold it for a second or two, and you should feel those obliques light up as well. So the last section is the plyometric section. What does plyometrics mean? It basically just means you're making something dynamic where your feet are coming off the ground. The most basic example is running. That's a, a plyometric exercise. So what we're gonna try and do here is get the fast twitch muscles in the legs fired up, getting up things a little bit faster, getting the heart rate up a little bit more, so we're ready to be explosive as soon as we get on the heavy bike or in the ring, whatever it is. So the first one we're gonna do is, um, uh, it's called karaoke or crossover step. Yeah. So we're gonna go one foot over, one foot back, and repeat that on both sides. So we're just looking for maximum hip rotation, getting his hips turning, getting the fast twitch muscles in the lower body working, and you want this nice and quick, and just keep switching direction. Whatever space you've got, just getting that, that rotation in with some speed as well. The next one is gonna be a runner skip. So with this one, we're gonna drive the left knee up, the right arm up, right? And then right arm, left knee. And then just skipping it as we go. And traveling forward, driving those knees up, and just getting a little bit of the upper body involved as well. Text me, <laughs> text me. All right, turn it around, <laughs> going that way. Oh, see it still yeah, forward. Yeah, other way, other direction, same thing. Exactly. And think about pushing the foot down and driving the knee up as well. So we're quick off the floor. You want as minimal contact with the ground as possible. Uh, next one, we're going to go lateral high knee. So again, lateral movement. Think about boxing. We need that lateral movement. Be able to move side to side uh, with ease. So the next one, we're just going to be high knees. You can start in place, jogging on the spot. Make sure you're using the arms. Think about touching your shoulders with your thumbs and just slowly traveling across to your right. Breathing nice and slow and switch. And rest. And you can probably do two or three on each side of that one. And again, we're trying to be nice and explosive and fast whilst keeping that breathing under control. Uh, next one, forward and back, just heel flicks. On and off the floor as quick as you can. And try to get your heels to hit your butt on these. And then same thing going back, last one. Perfect. Uh, last one we're going to do for this uh, plyometric section is just a side skip. So kind of kicking the feet together a little bit. Two or three steps either side at the end of each step. One big punch right across the body and then switch, right? So we've got quick feet, punch and reach, and then quick punch and reach. And again, 20, 30 seconds on that. There, yeah. And then there's your plyometric section, just a, a, a few examples of how you can add that in. And I use, usually like to do them right at the end of all the uh, rays, activate, mobilize, and then that's your potentiation right there just to get those fast twitch muscles fired up. So what's next? Well, the next thing I want you to do is go to Glenn Holmes' his YouTube channel and follow him. As you've seen there, he's very knowledgeable, not just in warm-ups, but in boxing as well. He's the best mick guy in the world, but also not just that, best coach as well. So check out his YouTube channel and you'll get loads of free information there as well. So basically, we went through a lot of stuff right there and we broke it down for you, explaining uh, not just how to do it, but why we do it as well. So coming up next, you know, like we mentioned at the beginning, we should have a 10, 15, maybe 20 minute warm up so they can easily break that stuff down. Yeah. and get into it that way, right? Yeah, totally. Uh, we've got all the sections for you there. You can try and follow it along. And again, uh, if you're going for time, 20, 30 seconds on each one. Uh, if you're going for reps, uh, eight to 10 reps each side. Uh, yeah, enjoy it. Give us your feedback as well, let's not go. Like I said at the beginning, email yourself this so you've got it for when you want to warm up. If you want to warm up different parts of your body, do it and I guarantee you that you will feel a big difference. Make sure you subscribe to Glenn's page. If you enjoyed this video and you want to learn some boxing, click here for my ultimate guide to boxing where I take you through everything step by step. Make sure you click here right now.